At the time, I had several things going, several businesses going, including my own music publishing company, uh, an artist booking agency, I uh, was managing different artists and writing songs, hit songs, many hit songs at that particular time. Um, and one particular day I was in the artist booking agency in Castle Ray Street when a young fellow who I was looking after came rushing in and said, JD, JD, the Beatles are coming, the Beatles are coming. And I looked at him and said, who the hell are the Beatles? He said, mate, they're the hottest act in the world, the hottest act in the world, you've got to get me on the show. He said, I'll do it for nothing. And I thought, well, goodness gracious me, what do I do here? So anyway, I happened to know a guy in Melbourne called Don Black, who was a part of stadiums. And they were involved with the Beatles too. So I rang Don and said, look, I've got this young bloke here, he'd like to, like to do the Beatles show, do you think we can get him on it? I said, he doesn't want, want to be paid. And he said, leave it with me. So I left it with him and a few days later I got a call back from Don saying, would you like to do the show yourself? And uh, by this time, of course, I knew who the Beatles were because they were front page of the Daily Mirror for about two weeks running. But I think the real reason I got the gig from their point of view was the fact that I was known in Australia. I had many hits. I had a current hit called Stomp the Tumbarumba. And I was also well known in New Zealand. I kept my name up in New Zealand as well. So I was a, a, probably going to be some sort of an asset to the show. I read in the paper prior to the, the Beatles coming out here that uh, a little story that said that leather was in with all the pop stars overseas, you know. And so uh, it might have been uh, a couple of years or so beforehand, I don't know, but I read the story and I, I was looking for some sort of a new uh, costume for the show, uh, something that would be, would be different. And I thought, leather, yeah, so that, that's the go overseas. I'll, I'll get a leather, a leather suit made and then I'll be right with it sort of thing, you know. So I went down and saw old Andy Ellis and Pitt Street <laughs> used to make all of our, our outfits. Cole Joy's and O'Keefe's and mine, and and, um, and I, he said imitation leather. He said to go. He said it'll be better for you. It'll it'll stretch better, and you'll be able to jump around in it and that sort of thing. And I said, well, I want diamond buttons or diamante buttons or something like that as well. He said, yep, we can do all that. Well, he made a beautiful suit, and there it was, nice, shiny, and black with it. Diamante buttons sparkling. I thought, wow, I'm going to kill him in this. And then one of the questions came up from the press. Uh, I believe that uh, leather is in overseas uh, uh, to Paul McCartney. And Paul said, uh, no, it's out. Oh, didn't I feel stupid then? Yeah, the songs I was singing were mainly Elvis Presley. Um, they were numbers that I put a lot of thought into. As a matter of fact, I actually recorded a single especially for the Beatles tour, which was uh, Blue Suede Cheese and a whole lot of shaking going on, because I knew that I could perform those well on stage. Um, but yeah, main, mainly Elvis Presley songs. It was the most hyped tour, because you expected something to happen all the time. There was something 24-7, you know. My memory up until New Zealand of John Lennon, he just sat there quietly, not, not smiling, what I'm saying in the dressing room is when I saw him, just, just sitting there quietly and looking, and staring, looking, you know, he'd look at you and, and he'd look down again. And he, he wasn't a conversationist at all. Whereas the other guys would, would sense, the other Beatles would sense that you, you wanted to have a chat with them or, g'day, how you going or that sort of thing, but, but not John, he was more introvert I, I think than than the rest of the Beatles, yeah.